Okay, now we're going to start the actual Sefer Imri Bina. We're starting the first Shar, the first sub-book, which is called the Pesach Hashar, the entryway or the entry to the gate. And this is Parag Aleph, the first chapter of that section. And the, for this uh, chapter is going to introduce the first, the general theme of this uh, section, Pesach Hashar, which is how to learn about Ahaz Hashem, about God's unity, and these type of topics. And um, specifically, it's going to introduce the proper way, the proper way to, like the method and as far as the, the kind of the academics, how, how we're supposed to learn this subject. And it starts off by talking about the topic of the mitzvah of Kriya Shema. Like we already said that the mitzvah of Shema is related to the mitzvah of Ahaz Hashem. And it quotes the Mimer Razal, the, the teaching of our sages, that says, um, that when a person says Shema, if they, they're supposed to elongate the word Echad of Shema, Shema says, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad, Hero Israel, uh, Hashem is our God, Hashem is one. And so it says that we're supposed to dwell on the word echad, that means verbally to make it long, but mainly that we're supposed to pause and meditate and think about what that means, that God is one. So it says anyone that does that, ma'arichin loy, ma'arichin loy, yamav ushnaisav. Um, they make his days and his years long. So that's the quote. And uh, the basic simple meaning of that is that anyone that does this is being promised long life. But the question that he opens up with is what does the concept of the length, what does it mean to be marich be'echa? What does it mean to, to, to make long, right? What is the idea of arichus of echad? What does it mean to make the, the one, God's unity, long, right? What does it mean to have a long unity? And um, the second question is, what does this have to do with, with long life, right? Why, I mean, it sounds like it fits that, you know, if you, um, if you, if you make the echad long, so they'll make your life long, but what, is, uh, what does this have to do with the idea of long days, specifically, is what it says. Um, and... So to explain this, he says that, he starts explaining that the, the general kavana, the intention that we're supposed to have in mind, let me clear this, when we say Kriya Shema. And he says that we have two kind of different approaches or, that are taught to what the proper ways to fulfill the mitzvah of Kriya Shema. And in general, they divide into the approach of, that's taught in Kabbalah versus the approach that is taught in um, Nigla in Torah law, like the Talmud. And basically, in Kabbalah, it says that the emphasis that we're supposed to be going from the world and tracing everything back up to its source to see how everything comes from God. So down here we have the world, and we're trying to go up to see how everything, and unify everything and see how it's all one with God. And that's the way it explains the, the general purpose and the general idea of the mitzvah of Krishna and Kabbalah. Now, in Nigla, in Torah law, and in the Talmud, it explains the opposite, that we're starting with God, and the purpose of Krishna is to see how God is ruling over the entire world, and we're going from the top down, and that's what it says, Tamli Cheu Bashmayim Va'aretz, and basically both of these um, explanations are based on that the word Echad, um, that the Aleph rep is, represents one, the, the uh, Ches is eight, and the Dalid is four. And it says that the one, that's God, that's the one God. The eight is the seven heavens and plus the one earth. Right, so that's the idea of the eight, and the four are the four directions of the world. Okay, and so the idea is that if you're going from the top down, is that you're supposed to see how God is running the eight and the four. And if you're going from the bottom up, you're seeing how the four and the eight are really all 
really just an expression revealing the one God. And so the uh, the Mitra says that even though these seem like two opposite things, they're really like one is saying that you're supposed to go up, one is saying you're supposed to go down. They're really not opposites. Not only that, they have to be done together. These two approaches are actually one thing and they have to be done together. And this is the general approach. Um, let me clear the screen here. And um, this is the general approach to learning all these kind of topics. And really, this is the way that we learn anything in general. Um, what happens is that we start off with our subject matter. And that, let's represent that by uh, this circle down here. Okay, And this represents whatever it is, the world and all the things in it, all the trees and the grass and the people and all the things we come in contact with in our life. That's all, that's all down here. And what we need to do in order to learn something is we need to take all of that information and we need to trace it back up here to find the abstract source, to find the, the principles. Um, this is the ab abstract source and that's the idea of you know in general that there's like there's principles and there's laws and uh, like laws of nature like discovering gravity and things like that that would all be the idea of tracing something up and seeing how there's some abstract thing that's behind how everything works because if you see a bunch of things falling you're not seeing the law of gravity you're seeing an apple you know an, an apple falls on Newton's head it's just an apple falling on Newton's head but uh, the idea is that when you, you can see patterns and you see that there's really some sort of abstract reality and uh, unifying reality behind everything. And so that's this process of finding the, the underlying uh, unified reality. Okay? And that's generally in kind of in general or secular terms, that's the idea of searching for God, is looking, being able to see what's behind, what is the, the inner source, the unified original source that's behind everything in the world. And that's the first step in our learning. And then after we do that, then we have to come back down and be able to s apply that idea and... Um, see how that gives us a better understanding of everything down here. And that's kind of like in science, how they'll make a hypothesis and then they'll come back and test it and see, well, does it really work in the world? And um, also every time we have, in, throughout our life and you know every day, we keep going back up and down, up and down. And every time we do that, uh, we hopefully are learning more, which means that, that this thing here becomes wider, that our understanding of the world becomes what's you know wider and wider which means that we're able to make sense of more and more and we're able to start to like guess things that are outside even though we didn't experience let's say this stuff here yet but we can predict well if i do this if i'm understand correctly up here then that means that if i do this i can make this happen and this is what makes change possible because without this process we'd be stuck just inside of we'd be stuck down here inside of this uh, little circle here and we would never be able to change and go expand our reality and move outward. And so this process of going up and knowing God and then coming back down and having that inform our understanding of reality is what breaks us free and lets us expand our horizons more and more. And the more that we understand this, uh, you know, the more unlimited we become down here until uh, if we get it all the way, then we become totally unlimited and we become infinite and that's the idea of bringing God's infinity down into the world. So this is kind of a general overview of what he's going to be explaining the next couple chapters. Um, it's all based on this, this concept of this two-phase process of our learning. And so we're going to the next, like, uh, maybe eight chapters, the first eight chapters or something, are going to talk about, you know, in detail how this process works.